So Jillian, let me turn first to you. As I look at that, and I look what's going on right now, and look at what this means for investors, we do have a big war going on with a lot of tragedy and a lot of potential consequences for geopolitics. Are we ch seeing potentially a change in the world economic order as well? We're absolutely seeing a change in the world economic order. Um, you know, that wonderful Francis Fukuyama phrase that we lived in the end of history at the beginning or the end of the 20th century, beginning of the 21st century, has been shown to be completely wrong because essentially history has been going backwards and we're seeing what we thought was a world that was globalizing as a whole, essentially fragmenting into the US-China spheres of influence, the so-called bamboo curtain to cite um, Hank Paulson, and the increasing split between you know, the Western bloc and the Slavic Russian bloc, if you like, you know, the new caviar curtain. Um, so you're essentially seeing two and a half, potentially three different areas emerging. And that is really a very big shift that we haven't seen this kind of magnitude of upheaval for several decades. Uh, Peter, we've had Larry Fink recently saying he thinks it's the end of globalization, which I think a lot of people thought was overblown. That's way too soon to call that. But are we seeing, as Jillian suggests, perhaps at least a dividing up in part into some blocks around the world, which is quite different from where we thought we were headed? Yeah. I, look, I, I do think that this uh, Russian uh, incursion into Ukraine that has created a geopolitical shift is going to reverberate through not only political affiliations, but also economic affiliations. I think to say that globalization is dead is way overblown. Uh, I don't think that that's even in the cards. But I do think that there are going to be numerous places in which companies are going to decide to actually accept a higher cost of manufacturer and thinking they can pass that through to the to the consumer. And so you're going to have higher structural inflation as a result of that. Now, will that structural inflation be offset by techno technological advances and innovations? It, it, it may well be. But I think clearly we're going to see a change. The more interesting question to me about vis-a-vis -vis globalization is this trading block point that you raised. China has attempted and still attempts to actually establish a contrary trading bloc to the U.S. and its allies. The U.S. and its allies are far, far bigger. If the U.S. and its allies, through this geopolitical change, decide to actually operate in a more concerted fashion, as happened after World War II, that's going to create an enormous issue for the Chinese and other people in that other bloc, because they need to trade with this, with this Western bloc, and they need to trade significantly with it. So it's, it's sort of up to the Western democracies and the Asian democracies about how they play this. If it all balkanizes and people go their separate ways, that's probably not a good thing for the economics and for the markets. If there is some sense of cohesion and an attempt to create more free trade capability between that bloc, I think that's actually an increase in economic activity and good for markets. Jillian, is it possible that what we might give up in sort of a, a convenient dealing with one another with some countries will be made up for in other places? That is to say, is it likely this would drive a closer union with, for example, Western Europe, Japan, South Korea, even Taiwan? Well, there is a optimistic scenario, which is, you know, tossed around, say, the chip sector or various parts of industry right now, which is that, OK, so America can no longer count on China as being the factory of the world. It can no longer count on having this labor supply side shock where suddenly wages are depressed because you can outsource everything to China. Let's bring it back into, into North America, maybe put more factories into Mexico. You'll create more jobs back in the US. And guess what? You'll be environmentally more green as well because you won't be tr you know, moving things around so much. That's a kind of optimistic scenario of essentially this reshuffling of the geopolitical order. Um, the pessimistic scenario, though, is that, of course, many commodities and raw materials are not found within the allied trading bloc at the moment. And you can't suddenly create lithium mines overnight, even though Elon Musk tweeted that he'd like to okay. um, this week. Um, another problem is that it's not clear that America has a workforce for even okay. um, supporting some massive reshoring of its manufacturing industrial base. And yes, maybe you can give it all to robots, um, but you know, even robots um, can't necessarily be the easy answer right now. So, so Peter, let me ask you, this is Wall Street week after all, uh, help me make some money here. If in fact there is what Jillian just called a reshuffling of the world order, where does that tell me I should put my money right now? Well, look, I, you can't 
answer that question and say, put your money here for the next two weeks, three weeks, a month, whatever. Right. You have to look at this over a longer period of time. But like, Europe has clearly made the statement that they're going to invest in their energy infrastructure, which means alternative energy. They're going to invest in defense. Uh, and those two areas have enormous um, tentacles throughout their economies and all kinds of companies that will benefit from that. I do think there will be some attempt in the United States to actually build some uh, uh, semiconductor and chip capability that people are concerned about as having have been offshored. So you're going to see investments in that. You can see it in the Intel announcements and the attempt to build uh, large plants in the South. So I, I don't think it takes a great deal of imagination to see where to put your money over the long term. I still think this, que this geopolitical question that, that Jillian and I are sort of touching on is a big deal. And the longer term trends and the bigger opportunity to make money is trying to figure out where that is going to fall. Peter, there was one other event that certainly shook those of us in New York and around Wall Street this week. And that was that shooting in the crowded Brooklyn the subway. Uh, as somebody who spent so much time on Wall Street, do you think that may have longer term effects, particularly as we try to bring workers back to work? It's shaken up a lot of people. I think it's a terrible tragedy and it's horrible for New York. But New York survived 9-11. It survived many other things and we will survive this and we will continue on.